Hi friends, Grace here. Welcome to this presentation where we're going to talk about Candida, Candida overgrowth, gut yeast infections, and how you can treat them naturally. Now, for those who don't know, Candida is a natural yeast that's found in the human body that's designed to assist the bodily functions like digestion and so on. However, the problem occurs when you get an overgrowth of this particular yeast, Candida. And how you get an overgrowth can be caused by a variety of factors. It's basically when your gut microbiome is disturbed. And it could be disturbed through the use of antibiotics, for example, like antibiotics is known not only to kill the bad bacteria but also the good bacteria so if it's killing the good bacteria in the microbiome it paves way for this yeast this fungus to grow and thrive which can cause issues you can also get an overgrowth through swimming in chlorinated water the chlorine is very um antibacterial you know to kill the bacteria and viruses in the swimming pool but it also kills the good bacteria and that can also cause a candida overgrowth you can get it through processed foods even the healthy foods that you buy in the shops if it's heavily sprayed like the veg and the fruit if it's sprayed with glyphosate and weed killers that can also disrupt your gut microbiome so it's a common thing many people today actually suffer from this overgrowth candida but they don't recognize that it's a candida overgrowth because the symptoms of candida overgrowth are so vast it can be difficult for doctors to actually pinpoint or ascertain the cause of various issues or sicknesses people have for example, insomnia, that can be caused by candida overgrowth. Fibromyagra, that's caused, that can be caused by um, candida overgrowth. Chronic pain, if you're suffering from digestive issues like bloating, gas, um, constipation, diarrhea, that can also be a candida overgrowth. Mood swings as well, depression, ADHD, brain fog that can be a candida overgrowth. If you have strong sugar cravings as well, carbohydrates, if you're always craving carbohydrates, sugar, that could be a symptom of candida overgrowth. Um, skin issues, eczema, acne, that could be a symptom of candida overgrowth. So it presents itself in so many ways, you know, it can be difficult to actually ascertain that the issue is the root cause is basically a candida overgrowth. Now the common method used in the medical world to detect if you have a candida overgrowth is generally through a stool test. However, these stool tests are not always accurate and they can present themselves as being negative for candida when you actually do have candida. That was my experience. I did a stool test and it came back negative for candida and parasites and my blood tests were always great you know and that's what made my condition so difficult because I had my insomnia that was the main thing that was bothering me I always had digestive bloating but I could manage that for me it was the insomnia that was really starting to get to me I mean imagine 15 years of not having the best sleep can be quite stressful on the body and I start to develop other symptoms as well like carbohydrate intolerance and so on. I spoke about that in previous issues. So for me, I was completely lost in my current situation because I'm doing all these tests. It's all coming back negative. Everyone's telling me I'm fine, but I knew something was wrong, you know? So I really prayed to God. God tells us these things don't come out but by prayer and fasting. So I really took this issue to the Lord. And then I came across a website called Candida Insomnia. Never seen it before. And it explained my symptoms perfectly, like what I was going through. It indicated a, a gut disbalance. My microbiome was out of whack, um, yeast and so on. So after I read that website, I immediately started the anti-Candida overgrowth, you know, protocol. So, which included fasting for like six days, enemas, doing the antiviral herbs. And then I would say 15 days, 
since I fasted for five days and I went on the candida diet. I'll talk about that in a moment. But then 15 days into like me doing this protocol, I started to expel yeast fungus for the first time ever, despite fasting for 17 days. Um, going raw, doing all of these cleanses, nothing worked until I did this, which is why I want to share it with you in case you're suffering. So it's only after 15, 16 days I started to expel yeast. So I took a picture of my stores. I was going to show it here, but maybe that's too personal. But I think it just helps so you know what you're dealing with. Because when I saw it, I wasn't sure. But anyway, I took a picture of my store. I took it, I sent it to um, a natural professional who specialises in gut health, Candida. And he came back to me and said that that's 100% candida. So that's how I know 100% now for sure that I do have this candida overgrowth. But I want to tell you that this thing is difficult to detect. For 15 years, I had insomnia. My digestion was messed up. Went to so many medical professionals, researching, trying different things. No one said it was candida or no one could tell me for sure that I was suffering from candida. It was only maybe five years ago I went to this doctor, naturopath, and I was telling him like my issues and he was going to put me on the gut cleanse. He said, and I told him that whenever I have fruits or any kind of sugar, even healthy sugars like fruits, I seem to have a bad reaction. I just notice it, especially with my sleep. And he said to me that any reaction you have to sugar negatively, even if it's fruit sugar, healthy sugar, then pretty likely you have candida. He was like almost certain. And then he said I'll have to go on like the anti-candida diet for three months. At that time I was a strict vegan. And it's basically you cut out all carbs, right? So as a vegan, if you're trying to do that, it can be quite difficult. But I did try it the vegan way. This was about four or five years ago when I wasn't sure, but I thought maybe I have candida. And um, everyone, I am not telling anyone to do what I did, you know. Diet, I, I always say diet is a personal thing. You have to be convicted, like, with yourself, what you want to choose. Now, I understand there are some people who really don't want to eat animal products, and that's fine. You can try doing it the vegan way if you want, because I initially did try to go down that route. There are some books that you can get, like Vegan Keto. There's a few that I did buy a few years ago. Um, this is another one where they give you recipes like candida free. This is a vegetarian one. So you can try that if you want. For me, that didn't work very well. It was a struggle to get my calories in. And um, yeah, it was a struggle for me to do it that way. So I think I tried to do that diet for two to three months doing the cleanse and I went back to eating how I normally ate like vegan and then it came back it relieved the symptoms a bit but then it came back I never did expel the yeast but with the protocol I decided to take this time which I've been doing for the last two months is I've adopted animal products this time which has made it easier for me to sustain a diet and um um, after I did this, that's when I started to expel the yeast and my, glo my bloating is gone. So I'm not having digestive issues, those digestive issues anymore, which is great. So um, I just want to tell you what I did, but there's ways and you can do it. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, which I'm going to share how I did it. You can try the plant-based way if you want to do it that way and see if that would work for you. For me, it didn't work. Yeah, I'll make that clear. Um, and it's really hard to get your calories and they often say you've got to eat a lot of tofu and stuff like that. My digestion at that present moment, I think, takes, doesn't do very well with tofu or even beans because of the severity of my condition. So I included animal products like fish, um, eggs chicken and beef and lamb and stuff like that so I've included that in my diet and um, antivirals and veg as well so I, I completely cut out carbs like rice everything and I've done it this way so it's basically keto that's what I was recommended and through the use of if you have severe candida from what I've read you diet alone doesn't just deal with it you also have to take antivirals and antifungals now, thank God you can find antivirals and antifungals naturally in the herbs, which I will share with you. Now, someone did say you can take other like um, prescription drugs like fluconza. I, I 
I'm not sure of it. But I, for me, that's always a last resort. I never want to go to pharmaceutical medicine because of the side effects. I always try to do it naturally first before I would ever consider going the pharmaceutical route. But thankfully, I don't think I need to do that route because I'm having success. So, um, so, but one thing you have to do, whatever route you want to do, if you want to include animal products or be plant-based, you do have to cut out carbs. If you have severe candy, that you have to cut out the carbs and the sugar because that's their primary food source, the yeast. You know, so if you don't cut that out, what usually happens is your symptoms will reduce, but it will come back. This is what I was always having. So you have to really cut the root, kill the root of these candida shell, these candida cells, the umbilicans, the ovary, you have to kill it like to prevent it from coming back. And where you can kill it is through various antiviral medication naturally. Now one powerful antiviral natural medicine you can try is undicemic acid. Undicemic acid, the candida umbilicans, they hate it. Now what and dicemic acid is, is basically derived from the castor oil and it prevents the fungus from growing. It has antifungus properties. So what you can do is that you can buy this from iHerb um, and dicemic acid and you take it with your food. If you can, hydrochloric acid just to help the digestion if your stomach acids are weak and it's very powerful at helping to clean kill the yeast. So undicemic acid is something you definitely want to include if you have candida. Another thing you want to try is MCT oil. MCT oil, this thing here. It's basically coconut extracted from the coconut and it's very very powerful. Again, it kills candida as well, the cell, so you want to include that in your regimen. But you have to be very careful of this. This can have a laxative effect, so you need to know how to dose it right. So you can start off with a tablespoon, work your way up to two and so on. But this is really good. It's good for the brain as well. This is something you definitely want to include in your regimen. Another thing you want to try is um, oregano oil. Very powerful. This is just, I love oregano oil. I just think it's so good. If, even if you have a flu or a cold or something coming up, very antiviral antibacterial and uh, candida albilicans doesn't develop a resistance to it so again something you want to include but you only take this for no more than two weeks because it's really powerful so you can use this another one is pal de alcohol you can get that in teas i drink a lot of this tea as well it's very very powerful this is like a bark that's native to the amazon forest and it's used for various ailments and that Almond also includes candida, very powerful when used for candida. So you can drink it in teas, it's used in various medication, you can get it in the tablet form as well. But it's something you definitely want to include in your resume for fighting candida. Another thing you want to include as well is digestive enzymes. The reason being is because when you have fungi, parasite, yeast, mold infections. They're very good at hiding themselves under biofilm, under mucus. So it can be hard to detect and find. However, if you use certain digestive enzymes, this is one that I recently bought, Candice, what it will do is that it starts to break down the biofilm, the yeast, to start to target um, the bad bacteria and the toxins from candida. So digestive enzymes, this is a good one you can get from iHerb, it's quite strong. This is another one as well, Candice, it also has digestive enzymes as well to support yeast issues, oregano oil as well, really, really good. So you can get stuff like that to start breaking down the, the biofilm as well. So those are the key herbs you definitely want to include in your regime. Alongside that you've got your garlic, you want to take your onions, another powerful concoction. This really works but you've got to be so careful because the um, 
it starts to kill the bacteria at such a rate, I'll tell you the recipe, that it can also be harmful to the body if your body's not ready for it, as it starts to release the toxins. But one powerful combination is that if you get like a half a litre jar and you juice three or four lemons inside it and you add a full heaped teaspoon of cayenne pepper, 9,000 I use at the hot cayenne pepper. So you use a heaped teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a heaped teaspoon of turmeric powder, a heaped teaspoon of ginger powder. And then you let it sit in water, warm, cool warm water for a few hours. And then you drink that and oh my goodness. Actually, start off by drinking a litre of water first. Then you try that concoction. And as you drink it, it starts to burn and it really starts to target the yeast and it can cause severe pain. I remember the first time I tried this. I'll post a link where a woman details the recipe in detail. So if you're going to try this particular concoction, please take heed that you have to be so careful because you can end up in hospital if you try this because it's happened to some people and I experienced so much pain when I tried this, right? But um, if you make that concoction, right, and then you drink it, it starts to really target the cells and starts to pour all the yeast that's sticking to your colon walls. And as it does that, the toxins start to be released. So then you might start to sweat, you might start to throw up, you might start to run to the toilet. It's so potent, you know, but it's so effective at really targeting the yeast. On, especially if you do it on an empty stomach in the morning. But watch the woman's video, she goes into it and she tells you like the caution of it. But it works really well. So just by incorporating these things, like if you think you have candida, doing this, you would get benefits. I'm telling you, it would work. Like So since I've been doing this for two weeks, right, my skin has cleared like so many people are saying to me, what have you done to your skin? Like, my skin is clear. Before that, I was breaking out a lot. Um, my hair starting to grow again because it kind of stopped. Um, I'm not dealing with brain fog anymore. My digestion is working fine. But mind you, I'm not taking carbs still. So everything is working okay. My sleep, I'm still working on that. It's a lot better. But because I have adrenal fatigue, I'm told that can take a lot longer to fix. Maybe up to a year or so. I don't know. But um, so far, I believe it's going in the right direction. And most importantly, I am expelling the yeast because I'm seeing it in the toilet, thankfully. So um, I'll see. Um, so after another month, uh, which will be three months, that's, that'll be the end of January, um, beginning of February, around that time, I will start to introduce more carbs. So I've started to introduce chickpeas. I've been having chickpeas, that's okay. Because that's really good for blood sugar regulation. So I've had that. Um, and then maybe after, in the beginning of February, I might start with buckwheat. So I'm just gonna start to introduce the carbs slowly and see how my body reacts, you know. So that's the daunting thing for me is like, have I killed off this yeast? How's my body now going to react with carbs? Can it handle fruits? You know, because it reached a point where I really stopped. I couldn't eat fruits anymore, which is quite sad. I love fruits like mangoes and bananas. So um, I'll start to introduce that maybe three months in and I'll see how it goes, really. I'll keep you updated. I'm sure a lot of you are interested to see how it goes. But so far, it's okay. Now, um, back to the animal product side of things. I've, this is what I've chosen to do. That was my conviction. And I'm happy I made this choice for my particular body. But for other people, you might not need to incorporate animal products. You might want to do it the plant-based, vegan way. And that's fine. You know, everyone's different. I, I'm just, I just want people to know that if someone wants to incorporate animal products for health there's nothing wrong with it as long as it's clean meat and you're doing it according to the restrictions God gave us in the bible and you're doing it for health there's nothing wrong with that yeah now I know you have to be careful like fish today I agree a lot of it is um the oceans today are not the same it's a lot of pollution you know but the fish I went for is salmon because from what I read it's um 
it doesn't have high mercury toxicity because it's lower end of the food chain and also as I've included animal products I'm also doing heavy metal cleansing as well just to be on the safe side so in other words taking chlorella juicing with chlorella your greens and so on so in case to avoid getting any issues with heavy metal toxicity but even so I want people to understand it's not even just the oceans it's also the soil you know being vegan doesn't eliminate you from catching conditions like a certain health condi um, health issues like I know a lot of plant-based clean eaters also getting cancer now um, also getting prostate cancer um, also getting diabetes you know strict health medical missionaries are also some have also died early you know so um diet is just something deep you know i don't believe it's one diet that fits all for everyone i think everyone needs to do what's best for their body i think genetics play a part as well from what i've been researching as well i mean yeah so everyone needs to do what's best for their body okay and um, yeah, I think that's it really. Key thing is, if you have candida, my advice to you, for three months, try and cut out the carbs. Go on the antivirals that I've mentioned with you and then see how you go. Oh, another thing, so important. After you do your antivirals, you also need to make sure you start to build your gut microbiome with probiotics and so on. So I'm also now taking probiotics as well while I'm doing the cleanse because I want to also start building my good bacteria so there's different types you can take this is a nice brand you know this particular one bacillus and stuff to help build my my gut flora I've also taken um there's another one I've taken oh, I've forgotten I'll pull it on the screen. Another good probiotic you can take as well. So after you do your antivirals, you need to be on probiotics for a good few months to build your gut flora. It's quite important. Um, yeah, so all in all, what you need to take from this is that if you have candida, cut out the carbs for three months and uh, go on a low-carb diet, keto diet. If you want to do it the plant-based way, you can try that. If you want to include animal products to help you sustain those three months, you can do that as well. And then after that, when you reach your third month, start to have your probiotics. Take them more frequently. Then after the third month, then you can start to introduce carbs one by one, certain food groups, and then just see how your body reacts slowly. You know, and then hopefully that would um, help you with your issue as well. And another thing as well, um, it's so important to detox and cleanse. I'll say at least once a year or twice a year, try and do a, a detox. I'll say five, six days fasting. If it's a water fast or juice fast, I've just realized the power in fasting, how it regenerates the body cells. And that's what I did. Like before I, I did the five days of, you know, cleansing, detoxing. I did the coffee enemas. I didn't eat. And then I started this low carb diet, you know, just to prepare my microbiome, my gut for it. And um, yeah, I'm happy so far how it's going. I see the light at the end of the tunnel now. Before I didn't see it, it was like, well, when is this going to end? You know, I don't understand what's going on. But when you understand, ascertain the cause or know what the issue is, it really helps, you know. So I hope that helps some of you all out there. And um, yeah, God willing, you see or hear from me in the next video. Take care and God bless.